What is going on, everybody? Welcome in, welcome in to another Zebra stream. My name is Ian Robinson, if you don't know. And I make toys, I make things, I make stuff. I make it all in ZBrush. How you guys doing? Get some music in my headphones, just so I can think for five seconds. I tend to play some music while we do this, but sometimes the music is still distracting, so I just have it in my background, in my head. Anyway, uh, let's get going. So uh, I'm starting the stream a little bit early today. Because I actually have a bunch of stuff I have to do today as well. So we we'll still want to go for around the two hour mark. But I'm going to need to kind of leave around 1130. So I know we usually stream until noon. But appointments and all that good jazz. So so hopefully. Let me just go ahead and share this real quick. Oop. Want to let the world know that things are happening. Screaming. And how is everyone else doing? Last week, last week we started this project called the Santa Cruz Screaming Hand. Um, I saw it on the back of a car. I didn't even know what it was when I started it. So I was really excited to sculpt something new, different. Um, I sculpt a lot of characters typically. And I don't have my pen. Where's my pen? I'm all over the place today. There it is. Perfect. Hey, uh, hey, what's happening? So this was kind of fun. This was different. So let's actually get a different material. So last week, we basically blocked this thing out, got it sculpted, got some teeth in, and then even got hand placements. So we're going to be working on getting the fingers done, um, getting them officially posed. I had temporarily posed them, didn't like them. So off stream, I basically set up some fingers that um, I thought would be a little bit easier to pose by breaking them up into sections because sometimes it's like it's too it's too many you know if it's one piece then you gotta mask it and you gotta bend and then you gotta deform this was a lot easier of an approach um i'm actually going to turn these into dynamesh uh, because they're just kind of z spheres right now and then we'll end up welding everything together officially what's up ian i'm sculpting using a lot of your methods thanks hey not a problem glad they are helpful Okay, so let's go ahead and get into it. Let's start sculpting this as we do stuff. Bloop, 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 bloop. All right. So officially what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the smartest route with this. And I'm going to basically get one finger built. And then I'm going to duplicate them the rest of the way. And I'm going to start with the middle finger overall. So I'm going to split off the thumb. Because that will be the only other finger that I do by itself. Because the thumb is obviously different than the rest of our fingers. Especially mine with my little toe thumb. Gotta love the toe thumb. So let's go ahead and go to um, split hidden. Get that going there. And then with this, we're just going to go ahead and auto group this. So you can actually find that over here under not poly paint, poly groups, auto groups. And I'm going to go ahead and isolate just this portion and the rest can go away because i already have spots dedicated for where those fingers will go we're just going to go ahead and delete hidden and now we're going to focus on just getting this finger built the way we want it to so and then what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to go ahead and isolate this i'm going to group this i'm going to take these i'm going to group this one and I'm going to go ahead and take these and group this. Now I'm going to go ahead and weld these together. And I'm going to use... I'm going to keep groups. I don't want to polish right now. I'm going to turn off blur. I'm going to see what the resolution is by using the picker. Resolution's about 168. So we'll go up a little bit and hit Dynamesh. And now we have our fingers Dynameshed. That's a little low. Let's actually go a little higher. Back that up. Come here, not 90. Let's go like, let's go like 500. We're gonna get some detail on there. The time for a ZBrush 2023. No, no 2023 has been announced yet. We did just drop, and I'm currently using 2022.0.6. We had a lot of bug fixes that uh, were brought to our attention, so we wanted to drop a patch in order to fix a lot of those. And if you have a Pixelogic Perpetual License or you're with Maxon, it doesn't matter. You'll be able to download the patch just straight from the upgrader. So whatever license you currently have, that part won't matter. Let me just make sure real quick I don't show anything I'm not supposed to. So if you go to your um, you go to your program files 
And then if you're on Pixel Logic, just go to your Pixel Logic, go to Zebras 2022, and then from there you have a updater upgrader. Go ahead and, and run the uh, upgrader and, or yeah, run them and then it'll tell you um, and that will update to the to the latest one. So 2022.0.6. We just announced that yesterday during our live Ask, Ask ZBrush live stream. And if you happen to have missed that, then you can go ahead and let's actually get you a link to that. Um, because you can actually go and watch that and we talk about that a little bit more in depth. So let me actually come here. The logic real quick. Let me get you a link for that. It was a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun. It was myself and it was Paul. So we were able to answer a bunch of your questions live, which was really, really cool. So go ahead and let me paste this into the chat there. All right, all right, all right. What's up, B? What's up, man? How you doing? And you respawn? I'm at old perpetual. Do I get the upgrade for free? So yeah, 2022.0.6, that is for you for free. Yes, that is a patch that's included. You should be able to upgrade 2022.0.6. Yes. Just use the updater upgrader in your currently installed ZBrush or go through your Pixelogic ID and sign in that way and that should get you what you need. It's a patch for everyone, so go get it. And that'll help with a lot of bug fixes. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and get into these fingers. So what I wanna do is actually wanna take one of these nails as well. Nails. And let's go ahead and auto group this. Again, I'm actually gonna go ahead and split these two and I'm gonna delete the rest. Now I'm gonna go ahead and split hidden on this. Oh, sub tool, split hidden. And now we're gonna go ahead and set this up with the finger. So ideally it's a good idea, especially if you're working with fingers or anything that is the same type of body part, like a leg or an arm. If you sculpt one, just duplicate it and then you don't have to worry about the rest. Chilling like a villain. Nice. Having some tea, watching some ZBrush. Debating if I want to figure out the shoulder pad or take a day and play some Tekken. Woo! Well, I mean, you know. <laughs> That's a tough one. Sit back, relax, and enjoy life and play a game or learn something new and enjoy life and play a game. I, I struggle with that. I struggle so much with being able to, like, do I relax? Because um, sculpting for me is relaxing, too. I'm, I'm that guy. Like, yeah. Sculpting is equally relaxing. Sometimes learning something new is relaxing. But then again, mindlessly playing a game? I don't know, man. It's hard to beat that. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and just start getting a spot for a finger. So if you've ever were trying to do fingers, it might be the stream for you. Now the thing with fingers too is that um, finger nails, they're not flat. Um, they're round, they, they go with the curvature of your actual finger. So if you spend the time to carve out a section and kind of round that up, I mean, it's okay to have a little bit of a flat spot, but it should kind of round. And using the base of your finger is a really great way to Kind of factor that in. Let's actually go here to preview AO. Turn that on just so that get a little bit of actual ambient occlusion preview in case I make too much of a different or drastic cut. We'll get that cleaned up. Kind of smooth that down. And this will help you set your finger in or your fingernail in place. Hello, Emily. Hope your day is going well. My day is going well. What I'm saying, sculpting, I, <laughs> I take it as a video game myself. It's just fun. Absolutely, yeah. No, oh, man. Crazy. Crazy talk. Okay, what do we have here? What do we, what do we have here? Okay, let's turn that off. Let's get this on. And let's just kind of work like this for a little bit. Now we can set this up a bit. Uh, 
actually merge that there. Perfect. Okay. I'm actually going to push this into the finger itself. Instead of trying to shape it so much, I'm actually going to embed that. And now I'm going to use the move infinite to kind of shape the rest of the nail. I'm wanting to make a kit bash mesh pack for myself with VDNs and IM. I'm thinking making a, a scale then merging with a plane should work for making VDNs, right? Actually, here, I'll show you a really easy way to start that process. Give me one second and we'll go over and cover that because that's actually a great idea of making VDMs. So, go ahead and save this real quick. And you know what? Actually, too, um, somebody who will, like, honestly, let me get you a link to a video that that actually explains VDMs really in depth, very, very quickly. Um, but I'll show you where it starts. But I want you, I wanted you, because we have a ton of top tip videos on our website, on Pixelogic's YouTube. So, um, in fact, Anna Carolina says it really, 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 really well. Like, honestly, this is probably best bang for your buck too so that you have something to fall back on so it's not just everything i'm telling you here so here is a link for that that will get you like that way you'll always know where to go for that but for vdms if you open up your spotlight and you go under miscellaneous and then you go to this uh brush 3d template right here this is actually a really good spot to start. So did I say, let me let me save my project real quick because these are projects. I'm gonna save this real fast. So I believe it's this one. It's been a while since I made a VDM, so bear with me. Yes, it is that one. And what's cool about this one is it already comes, it already comes polygrouped for you. So project miscellaneous brush 3D template. And this way, what you can do is you can mask off this section here. So what I would recommend is kind of dividing it up a little bit. Well, first things first, what I would do is I would create a morph target here, store that morph target, okay? And then kind of subdivide up a little bit. Actually, does it come pre-subdivide? It comes pre-subdivided, even better. So you have a subdivision here, perfect. So yeah, go to morph target and store your morph target and then mask this section off here and then make your shape. Whatever that shape is, you'll want to make it. So you're doing something like this. Boom, 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 boom. You'll have the shape here, right? And then what you want to do is you're actually going to want to replace one of these uh, one of these VDMs here with like this chisel brush or this chisel creature brush. You're going to want to replace the VDM brush with this VDM here. So go to brush, go to, uh, was it select here? Boop, 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 boop. And then it's been a little bit. That's why I said watch here. So let's, let's do an append for this. So this should actually take my shape and append that to the top. Let's give it a second. I have to create an insert mesh first. Right, perfect. To create new insert mesh, say new. Can't do that with subdivisions level. Let me just see if that worked. Yep, there it is. So yeah, that's the approach you would take. But go ahead and follow that tutorial. That tutorial is going to take you a lot. Like that way, it's it's really nice step by steps. Really broken down well. Vector displacement mesh. So what a VDM does in 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 uh, overall in overall theory. <laughs> so basically, like you know how an alpha. So if we take an alpha, for example, let me just add a sphere real quick. So if we take this, basically what it's doing is it's actually changing the geometry uh, value. So if you have something like this and you subdivide, and then let's say you grab, you're grabbing, let's just say a standard brush and then you're applying an alpha, right? What the alpha does is it actually, here, let's do drag just for true representation. 
What the alpha is doing is it's actually taking the mesh that's already there and it is just projecting that texture or that alpha onto the existing mesh. And if the mesh itself isn't actually able to capture all the detail, you'll get something soft like this. So I'd really need to like up the subdivision level in order to get a decent texture. With a VDM, like this creature chisel brush, what is happening is, and you can't have subdivisions for this, but what's happening is you're actually allowing and creating new geometry that's extending off of the original mesh. So this allows you to have overhangs like this, which you can't do with normal alpha or texture. So you can't have an overhead like that or an overhang like that. So VDMs just really allow you to create geometry that's pre-built quickly. And so you can actually take your time, build that mesh up, and create these little kit, kit bash effects. So, for example, like, you know, let's say you wanted to... I'm just going to go ahead and initialize this. Like, let's say you wanted to make a pretty simple creature, right? Um, or you're just playing around with ZBrush. In fact, this is how I get a lot of users started in ZBrush quickly. Is that you just go ahead and subdivide your mesh a little bit. So it's nice and clean. Delete lower. Turn on... Uh, symmetry and then say like okay I need a pair of ears let's actually subdivide up a little bit more delete lower perfect boom now we have some ears that we can put on here go ahead and get a weird little mouth going on see what I mean like you can already start getting different shapes get a nose in there get some eyes in there like so just VDMs allow, allow you to do that now imagine if you took this one step a little bit different and let's say like you carved out a place for the eyes to be you're like okay yeah i want to come in here and clean this up make this kind of nice okay get a little uh get a little orbital going on here perfect now i'm going to take that i'm going to go back to that chisel creature brush and i'm going to grab that eye and now i could put eyes in there so i can actually start really really getting some cool stuff and then again, and get my ears in there. This is a great way, if you're new to ZBrush, this is a great way to just start figuring out shapes and just playing around and come up here. So these top ones, like if it says chisel 3D or organic chisel, and you pop it up and you see all of these different BDMs up here, this is exactly what that is. Look, you can come here, animal ears. Let's give them some animal ears on top. You can change that direction. You can rotate it. So it's really, you can, you can kit bash really, really, really fast. Yeah, not a problem. Yeah, I've watched a great bit on VDMs and saw nothing about attaching a scale to a plane, making them, but yes, I've made them that way too. Okay, great. When you say um, attaching a scale to a plane, do, 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 do. Hold on. I want to make sure I'm just understanding right. Uh, amazing. Yeah. Is, the program fr is this program free? Um, ZBrush is not free. ZBrush is owned by Maxon. But we do have a free version called ZBrush Core Mini. And ZBrush Core Mini gives you the entire ZBrush experience and what and how it operates for free. ZBrush Core Mini is free. So if you're just a Google, and I'll get you a link right now. What's cool about ZBrush Core Mini is that it's just pure sculpting. You get a sub tool, you can kind of play around, and you can actually export out into. Um, you can export out and 3D print your your stuff as well. So it is definitely. It's definitely a really good program. Can you use a VDM preset like to show in your portfolio, or is it like cheating? So I wouldn't call it cheating, no, but you would definitely want to, like, make it your own. So, like, I wouldn't just, like, throw this on and call this done. I would want to, like, just think of VDMs more as, like, a base mesh that you're operating with. So, no, I wouldn't consider it cheating. I would just consider it, like, a starting point. So, you know, if I wanted this character to have a beak, right, I'm not going to just put the beak in and call that, a, call that done. I'm actually going to come in here, and now I'm going to modify that. And clean that up so as long as you're within you know as long as you start with it but it gives you the shape that you're looking for and then you start modifying like honestly yeah it's it, it would be totally fine 
Because look, you know, at the end of the day, a lot of studios, at least the ones I worked for, they all use base meshes and pre-made brushes and tools. Because A, they're trying to match style. Like you have all these different artists and you're all trying to match the same look and feel of whatever it is you're building, whether it be a game or a toy product. And so it's easier to have all these base meshes and all these things pre-built for those artists to work with. The only thing you want to understand is that like as long as you understand the anatomy flow and how things are built and how it works and that you can replicate a 2D concept to 3D, then you're going to do just fine. But like I said, a lot of studios use use base meshes all the time. So don't make it don't sound like it's cheating. It's just a starting place. Make it your own, utilize it, but no. I I use base meshes all the time. What I what I say a lot of times is that if you're brand new to sculpting in general, it's important to start from scratch because you're learning how to build the proportions, volumes, and learn how to measure the body against itself. Once you get that established, then working from a base mesh becomes easier because you already know where everything is supposed to be. It's just if you start from a base mesh when you're brand new and you're trying to seriously learn anatomy, you're going to get thrown off a little bit because there's things you're not going to know in the beginning that eventually you'll learn through trial and error. And that's kind of like the school of hard knocks. It's like the long way. So building it from scratch will get you learning those shapes and volumes and proportions quickly a lot faster than it would be from working from a base mesh if you have no starting foundation of knowledge. But once you have that foundation knowledge, start from a base mesh. A lot of us do it all the time. So there's no shame in that and it's not cheating whatsoever. Just make it your own. Enjoy the process and make it your own. No rules, go for it, yep. If you didn't have a tool, use it responsibly. <laughs> That's pretty funny, pretty funny, yeah. Um, hello, hello. Um, I see another language in there. I'm going to try to Google Translate it. I will tell you, I'm, uh, I only speak English, but I try to do Google Translate when I can. So um, let me just see real quick because I, like, I don't like missing questions. Something about the closest door. Not sure what that means. Doop, 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 doop. Uh, super basic question, but what is the best way to save a ZBrush project? I've always saved my sculpt as a new file um, as soon as I make some big changes or close ZBrush, but this doesn't feel very efficient. That's a really great question. And so there's two ways to save project files. Um, the first way, which is very standard for ZBrush users, is that we start basically with ZTL. So we come up here to the top right hand side say save as and what I do is I save iterations because the ZTL doesn't save any history so I always start with the block out get the get the idea on paper and then after that you'll see like Santa Cruz mummy screaming hand underscore zero two underscore zero three sometimes I'll say like um for example let's see here where do I have that's storage where do I have ZBrush work here. I'm sculpting a Roger from American Dad. So I'll do something like Roger Smith block out underscore zero two underscore zero three underscore zero four underscore full merge. So this might seem kind of redundant and ridiculous, but at the same time, these are much smaller file types. And so this is really effective when you make a big change to save out a different version. However, if you're somebody who would like to have all the history and doesn't mind a super large file, the way to just save a project would be to hit Control or Command S or come up here to File Save As with Undo History Checked. This will then save your project, meaning not just what's in your current viewport, but every other uh, palette that you have uh, started up under the tool, as well as all the history. And then this will save everything so then you can always scrub back. Um, these generate pretty large files. So I would be careful with that because you don't want a 10 gig file all of a sudden. That might be a little hard to open up. But at the same time, again, if you don't mind, that's the way to do it. So there's only two ways to save. However, there is another method uh, under the save ZTL that actually compresses the file even further and allowing to maintain the overall project and uh, well, the ZTL of what you're working on. And that is our uh, image 3D GIF and uh, PNG format. What this will do is actually condense it much further 
and allow you to send essentially what is the same equivalent of a ZTL um, as an image, and then that will open back up. So if you're sending files to friends or you're trying to get a file to your boss and they're like, give me the ZTL, send them, you know, and you're having a hard time sending it through email, send them an image uh, 3D uh, GIF or PNG, and that will also take it there. So those are the only ways currently to save in ZBrush. It is a kind of ZBrush thing, but it's the way to do it. I was saying, like, uh, would you take uh, your fingernail scale and then merge it into a plane and turn it into a VDM? And, or is it wise to make VDMs stemming from actual plane itself? It's wise to make a VDM actually stemming from the plane itself. That's why we would also, I would encourage, like, a fingernail. Once I had a fingernail it, that I really, really like, like, let's say this is my fingernail and I'm in love with it. This is the best fingernail I've ever done. This is where you would just turn this into an IMM brush. And then you'd have different iterations of that finger. Way simpler, way easier to manage. Because again, a VDM is attached to the original mesh that you're drawing it on. So you can't have subdivisions, which, you know, that's fine. You can't have subdivisions with IMM either. Um, but the point is, is that it's a, it's permanently attached. It's like you're welding it uh, to the mesh that you're drawing out on. Where an IMM is independent. So I like to have my fingernails independent. Um, or I just sculpt them in. It's one or the other. But in theory, if you wanted to make a fingernail VDM that is you just draw on and just weld it onto the finger, you could totally do that. And what I would do is just sculpt the top of this portion. Uh, so it would be no more than this portion. It would be like this. Right? It would basically be this section here. And then you could draw that out. It's really however you want to approach it. There's no wrong way to eat a Reese's totally up to you <laughs> which is always nice yeah not a problem not a problem i've decided i'm working on hands all right B. good job happy new version i asked about that yesterday yes yep uh what's good carbon four 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 oh you only have two fours today what's up carbon? um hold on let's see uh or can you save projects uh with undo history off you can you can absolutely actually default when you go, it will look like this file and undo will be turned off. I turn it on when I'm saving a project. When Okay, here's where here's where projects come in really, really handy. You got a file and you're ready to 3D print it. And you're not sure if the details are going to pop. That's when I save a project. I, start, I open up the ZTL from scratch. I save a project. I add undo history on. And then I push all the details as far as I think they can go. Then I run that print. If the print comes out and they need to be dialed back or they need to be pushed further, now I have all that history that I can play with to repeat those those um, that history and call back to it. That's really where I use it personally. The only other time I've done a project with history turned on is when a client has said, I need to know everything you've done with that entire file, which has only happened once. Um, and that file was huge, and I still broke it up into two projects because it was so big. So, um, so again, it's it's all about it's all about um, what you would like to do. But yeah, by default, it's going to be turned off. But you could definitely turn that on. In fact, I don't know why it's currently on now. So let's turn that off. <laughs> Probably save the project with something. That would be the explanation. My alter ego account. <laughs> oh, fun. nice, 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 nice. Uh, let's see here. Uh, so, what's the difference between a VDM and like creating your own brush? Is it the same thing? So, a VDM brush is a vector displacement mesh. It's just different. You could still create your own. It's just really good for fast concepting and getting stuff done, which is actually what oil change mentioned. It's really good for fast concepting, fast sketching, finding new looks. Or maybe there's just like, you know what? You're just like, I really don't want to make an ear from scratch i have made hundreds of ears and today i say nope or i don't know how to make an ear but i want to see what one looks like um those are all good ways honestly no wrong way guys it's it's completely it's what i love about zbrush there's no wrong way you're just just making stuff and things and zbrush we give you the tools it's default just take the, the default brushes, pull something out, and make it your own. 
you're like me who likes to do all this stuff where I make things from scratch. I mean, even I started this project actually, uh, pulling a, a base mesh, pulled the hand out, ripped the hand apart. It's still, I'm making it my own at the end of the day, but you know what I mean? Like, we just start with the with what we know and then we work from there. Really gotta stop moving so freaking hard. What's happening? The resolution's actually pretty low. So let's, before I start pumping in the detail here, I'm gonna go ahead and take this and make that knuckle a little bit. Move that down. I don't wanna finalize the knuckles too much. But I could take this, isolate this, pull this up here, get that started. Nice. By update from 2022.0.2 to 0 0.6, do I remain all my zebra settings? Yes, it should absolutely remain the same. The best way to upgrade personally is just go into your ZBrush folder. So if you have a Pixel Logic, ZBrush 2022, come on down here to our upgrader and actually I believe it's the updater. You run this and then that's going to go ahead and uh, set you up and all your settings should be the same. But if you're ever within doubt, honestly, just take your startup folder. If you've made changes to the startup folder, just take the startup folder, copy it off site. And then when you install a brand new version, this only usually changes when you upgrade to a full version. Like when you went from 2021 to 2022, that was a full version change. And that's when all of this, because it actually creates a new folder. So like I have ZBrush Core Mini, ZBrush Core. If I had 2021 on there, that would be its own folder. Then 2022 would be its own folder. When I had 2018 on there, it was, so like you'll have a separate folder. So yeah, your current project weighs about 12 gigs. I'll wait a few minutes every time I open it. Yeah, that might be a little, just a teeny, teeny little bit, you know, teeny little bit. I would really love to know how to make e, uh, emissive maps without going into Photoshop or some other way or some other third party. I believe in the power of ZBrush can do it. Any ideas? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, I don't think so. I don't think there is a way currently to do that in ZBrush. No. Under our multi-map exporter, which is our Z plugin, which generates all the maps that are possible within ZBrush, we have displacement vector, normal, ambient occlusion, cavity, and mesh exporter. Um, so at this point in time, I do not believe there is a way to do that. We have our vector displacement up here. Um, this would be the, where I would point you to if that was possible. I don't think, I don't, I can't think of another way to do that. Not at this time. Yeah, <laughs> I've come so far. Nope, layers is no wouldn't be in. No, sir, I don't. I do not believe Supa at this time. I will double check and look that, but I do not believe so. Our vector displacement. There's our normal map. There's our dis there's our displacement map. There's our texture. Yep. UV. Nope. Not a problem. <laughs> All right, all right, all right. Okay. So I'm looking at my finger. <laughs> my finger? The most jankiest finger there is. But that's my reference. All right. Dealy here, we're just keeping... So this whole thing is Dynamesh. We're going to smooth it all down, get the lumpies out before we actually do the rest of it, but the posing part is gonna be super fun. Let's actually push this back a little bit here. 
Okay, and now what's cool about this, and the reason why my finger is broken up in this way, is it's gonna make posing really, 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 really simple. Like, Zoolander simple. So, this is gonna help overall get what I'm looking for. Now, I gotta figure out how detailed I actually wanna make this finger because, and here's what I'm gonna do, I'm actually going to, this is a Eric Sosa trick, but uh, I'm actually going to take my clay buildup and switch it to alpha 18. Um, this actually generates a little bit nicer um, forms, especially if you're working with muscles. I like to use it for details as well. Just a nice, it's a little bit of a softer fall off. Gives me a little bit more of what I like. You're going to go into trouble of giving someone the finger. It should be accurate, right? Actually, you, 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 you ready for this one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It sounded like Morty right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. You ready for this one? That's the finger we're working on. Now, the question is, why am I working on this finger? And the answer is really, really simple. This finger is the same length as your palm. So this will be really fun. So I love to come through. It's Ian the bro! What's happening too? Yes, absolutely. What I like to do is measure. And you can see here how the palm I have. Now the mouth is open. This, I have to take this into consideration, but the finger I have is just slightly, it's still technically too small for the width of the palm, but in this case, his mouth is completely open, so I will have a little bit of freedoms, but what I could do is just literally raise that up just a little bit to make that match the rest of the way. There. And that would look a little bit more accurate. And let's turn on our lovely pizza box here. And where did my fingernail go? Oh, that's where it happened. I gotta raise it all up like this. I gotta come here. I gotta rotate this a little bit. Put that here. Popcorn! Nice, nice, nice. <laughs> All right. Now we're going to start getting this. This is going to be the fun part because here now I'm going to see if this is actually where I'm going to want everything. Now let's see. I'd say let's push these forms a bit. Okay. First things first, I'm going to come here to Dynamesh groups. I'm going to turn polish on. And I'm going to go ahead and get that redynameshed. And this helps out, cleans up a little bit of forms. It's a really nice way to keep things nice and tidy while still doing dynamesh stuff. And now let's do a temp pose. So I want to make sure that this is going to work out. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. And now I'm actually going to move this up. I'm going to put this in its own folder. In fact, here, let's do this. Let's go back to V1. Turn the pizza box on. I'm going to turn everything else off but these two. And I'm going to hit Control F. And that is going to go ahead and put the visual ones, the subtools I have selected, into its own folder. And I'm going to call this my finger. Now I have that there. So now I can always call on this one here. And for funsies, I'm going to go ahead and this is the nail. So let's rename this nail. Perfect. And I'm going to rename this the finger. Beautiful. And now I'm going to go ahead and just duplicate this one finger, move this out, turn this off. Let's do a test pose so that I, I know it's actually going to work the way I want. I'm going to go ahead and touch that right there. Mask this off. Come in. I'm going to go ahead and position this. Now I gotta see. 
I see a good spot to start merging this down. Like this and demask that one. Here. Yeah, this is already this is already gonna work out well. I'm posing from the middle. Yeah, now I can just isolate this guy right here. So I can actually bend this further if I wanted to have this a little bit more. Maybe take my move brush that up a bit. Gotta keep an eye on the time. For those of you who are just joining, I have to... I, I started the stream a little early because I'll be leaving um, in about an hour and a half. But I wanted to get the full two-hour stream in, but I have an appointment I have to get to, so I do apologize for having to leave a little early today. Now let's see how this looks here. Yeah. I think that's going to work. I think that's going to be a good finger. I love making stuff like this. Yeah, it's fine. Yep, the finger looks like it's strong enough to walk. It really is. Okay, perfect. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to push this one back up, and I'm going to rename this middle for obvious reasons. Oop. Okay. Now for this one, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to keep this one hidden. So this will actually be my... Finger OG. I do a lot of redundancy with my uh, duplication, but it's to help keep me organized. So I'm going to call this index for my index finger. Right? And I'm going to move this over here. Now, the thing is, is that the index finger is smaller than the middle finger, but not necessarily skinnier. So, what I'm going to do is I am going to scale down just a little bit. But then I'm going to go ahead and just pull that straight back. So, it's a little bit... Um, it's a little bit... What's the word I'm looking for? Smaller. Yeah, jeez. Okay. Great. Good job, Ian. Learn to speak. <laughs> In my mind. Whew. All right. This way, this looks a little bit more accurate. And then I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this one one more time. But now I'm going to call this the ring. Go. Yes. Yes. Now I'm not worried about the nail. If anybody is wondering why I'm not dragging the nails on through. I'm not worried about that too much. We are going to really want to push these fingers... Really gonna want to push these fingers pretty hard. Bring that down just a little bit more. And then I'm gonna duplicate this one more time. Now, funny enough, I'm actually gonna go ahead and duplicate this in this in the correct order. I'm gonna call this pinky. So now I have my index middle ring and pinky, and I'm just gonna scale this one down. So now all of my fingers have the same starting point. Now I got to think there's a little bit of a curve to your hand. I'm going to want to rotate that just a bit more. So come over here. Nice. Is the sculpt, is the live sculpt off going to be open as per the last couple of years? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Did I make the Sonic the Hedgehog? I, I have made a Sonic a Hedge. Uh, I have made a Sonic the Hedgehog. That was a while ago. Um, let me see. Where do I even have that one posted? <laughs> That's a, where would I even have it? If you want to see the Sonic I did, um, I, I'm not going to guarantee how good it is anymore. It's been quite 
it's been quite a few years. I want to say, when did I make this Sonic? I think I want to say like three, four years ago is when I attempted a Sonic the Hedgehog. I'm going to have to go back to my Instagram. Let me, let me go back into my Instagram a little bit. Let's see if we can find it together. Let's see. We keep scrolling long enough. Hey, if you guys want to see something, just real quick. My Articulate Vegeta. I really got to get back on this project. Look at that. Boop. Um, let's see here. An Iron Giant that I never finished. I have a lot of unfinished projects, I'm realizing now. Just my sculpt off a couple years ago, the steampunked one. We're now starting to get into work that maybe might be a little old. Boop, boop, boop. We're going, we're going, we're getting older, we're getting older, getting really old. Ah, here's the Sonic that I made. What's this one? Is there a video? Yeah, this is the Sonic that I never finished. You know what? That's not too bad. That's really not that bad. As I critique my own work. So yeah, I made this Sonic. <laughs> hello, hello. Uh, yeah, so when was this? Few years ago 133 weeks ago why does it do that oh, okay here february 21st 2020 so yeah i made this back in 2020 it's a fun little project i should probably go back to that yeah 2020 2020 uh the pan the pandemic time was a uh, interesting um actually if anybody's curious i don't know why i closed that if anybody's curious i'll share i'll share a link to that um you guys want to browse through my history of uh of Instagram stuff. I also have a link tree on there, so I'm really critical of my work. Thank you guys. <laughs> awesome work. They still look really good. Oh, that's I appreciate it. I'm very critical of my work. Um because I'm always trying to improve, you know? Like I've been sculpting now and using ZBrush for about seven years. And I feel like um I feel like I just I need to like try to get to that next level. So, you know, I'm always I'm always trying to push myself further, which, you know, do that whole practice what you preach thing. That's always that's always important. <laughs> but when I sometimes when I'm like, oh, my gosh, this was like three years ago, I start getting nervous. <laughs> OK, real quick, I'm kind of posing my hand real fast. I want to see. You know, let's do something weird. Let's do something like that. OK, that would be kind of cool. And the secret handshake just got really nasty, yeah. Uh, but did you make did you make Sonic EX? No. No, I did not. So I haven't made any actual Sonic the Hedgehog or any production. Talk to the hand. <laughs> exactly. Time is okay. We still got we still got time. Was that like an hour? Next, we'll be doing wraps. This is a gonna be a fun little mummy mummified version of this Santa Cruz screaming hand. Which thanks to the chat and my colleague Paul, we uh, we figured out what it was because I did not know. It's funny how I didn't know. I'm, I've lived in California my whole life, but I've been mostly Southern. But I guess maybe that's why. <laughs> no. Figure out. Let's rotate this a bit. Here, let's that there. Eventually, we're going to weld the hands and the fingers all together. So, 
start with this process here. So this is a really nice way. If you break, break up your finger into these parts, it makes it just easier. In fact, if you guys like or would like a simple like hand base mesh to work off of, you can drop that into the newsletter because we always have new assets available in our newsletter. So I could save this out too if you guys would like finger parts or hand parts once I complete it. Let me know. This guy masked that part off. You're gonna bounce and do some work. Or you're gonna be hella distracted. Aw, oh, stay, be distracted. <laughs> Get some work done. Have fun. Thanks for stopping by, man. Appreciate it. Okay. That's looking lot better still not in its final position before we weld it together we're going to put it in its final position because that's where we're going to make the wraps off of so thinking this this finger needs to be pulled back a little bit because we're going to go as we're going to try to get as dramatic as possible and since i've always considered hands to be their own character anyway as in there's so many moving parts with a hand that it's basically its own character like i say if you have a full character, like a human character, I break that up into five different characters. You got hands as one character, feet as another character, then the main body as the main character, and then you have the head itself, and then accessories and posing becomes its own kind of character. So everything has life to it. Um, so even with this hand, like he has so many different elements now, we got to really make sure we push this far as we can so we're gonna break it and then we'll dial it back just a little bit like if, especially in posing here like if i do something like this i know that's almost too far so i'll push it back like that and then kind of dial that in Uh, do do okay cool thanks oil change nice nice Thomas Chris oh did I miss a question Ian is there a stream on Pixelogic event where streamers can critique and comment on viewer Z brushes meshes not uh, not final 2D renders yeah Tomas usually does critiques I have stayed away from doing critiques on the stream um, just because um, I always felt that that was more of a uh, was more of a personal thing however you know if you if you ever wanted to show me like your portfolio i wouldn't mind taking a look at your portfolio and knowing what you know if i know exactly where you're trying to go i don't mind taking a look at that stuff um but critique sessions sometimes i don't know i feel like that's always that was always a personal thing so i've never done them publicly but um i have a discord that i it's just ir sculpts and if you ever wanted to have your work sent over to be looked at you can always tag me and then from there, um, um, I could take a look at it and have a little bit more of a of a personal one on one. I feel like with streams, this is my personal opinion, by the way. So this is not like this is not saying anything negative about people who do critiques on streams. But for me, I like that one on one talking to you directly and saying like, hey, you know, this is where you trying to achieve. Where do you want to go? What's your goal as an artist and why are you making a portfolio to begin with? Um, and once uh, and once that's established, it's then easier to kind of guide you into the direction you need to go, not necessarily anything else. So um, that's just my thoughts. But there is an invite to my Discord if there's something you guys are interested in and I can always take a look. But I've seen other people's works on here real quick before and... But that's just my overall feeling on it. But definitely feel free to jump in there. Because also that Discord has a ton of artists in there. And a few uh, really good friends of mine like Anna Carolina, Shane Olson's in there. Paul's in there. Like we have some people in there that love to hang out and help out. A lot of my moderators are great. So it's a really good community driven Discord that's just there for artists to help each other. If you're excited and would like to check out that Discord, just pop in there. Say hi. Introduce yourself and share your work. Because sharing is caring, guys. Pew. 
Hello, hello! That, uh, let's see. Mia Mori? Hello? Hopefully I said that right. What's up, Matt? Matt! I'm not a, a big believer in critiques, but it works for some people to go for. Absolutely. It really does, yeah. It is person dependent. When I was, um, when I got serious about my art, and I mean, like, I was like, I'm doing this. I am serious. Let's go. Don't stop me. Everybody get out of my way. Ian's coming in. Um, <laughs> um, I talked to, because um, at the time I was learning from Shane Olson, and I spoke to him directly, and I asked him to rip me apart. I was like, please, don't, don't, be, don't be shy. Don't be gentle. Pop in there. Tell me I suck. Tell me I'm no good. Tell me I can improve on all these things. Tell me what it what what do I need to do to improve and to succeed? And he did. And then I took all of that advice and I ran with it, no questions asked. And he was a he was a really big um, part of my growth in the very beginning. So yeah. go for so yeah i could definitely see us super helpful oh cool thank you noted i'll take a look i do agree i think that i think it depends on where you want to go as an artist i think if you are advanced easier to know where the value of the critique but newer people that may need to be personal yeah absolutely absolutely all right dive this even further You know, the biggest takeaway too, you know, um, that, I've, that I've always told new it, new artists, advanced artists, um, and everybody in between, you know, don't rush anything. Take your time, play with it. Especially like, I'll tell you, doing this hand model was actually a twofold for me because hands and hair, that's still my bane. Like I still struggle with these things. So um, as an artist, I want to improve on them. So I purposely find projects that are going to make me make it as good as possible. And this helps me so much with trying to improve my um, my skill set as an artist. So, you know, um, when you see me doing very specific projects, this is usually why. Because <laughs> you know what? Art's a lifetime journey, guys. I love it. I feel like he's th about ready to throw a Kame Kame. <laughs> a Kame Kame. <laughs> Kame. Does anyone know how to copy subtool pivot position to another subtool? Mm, that's. Okay. Um, like copy and pasting a, a exact position? No. Do not believe so. However. What you can do, if it's the same exact subtool, just copying the subtool it copies ex its exact position. And then if you if you have an IMM brush that you're pulling from, that's gonna that's going to fall off of the normal you drag it from. But you can adjust your gizmo to that pivot position. Um, so then you can snap to however that gizmo is, which we actually showed yesterday. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Actually, watching this saga again, my son got really into Dragon Ball, and so I was like, he already knows so much about like Raditz and the early days of Vegeta and stuff. So I was like, but he's never seen the show completely, and I was like, and he's twelve, or no, he's eleven. He's eleven. <laughs> anyway, I was like, okay, you know what? Let's go ahead and let's go ahead and start right off on the uh, on the Frieza saga. Like, let's go. You already know the technical stuff. And oh, he, he's absolutely loving it. Okay, we're going to do the same thing here. So we have these different subtools. I'm going to go ahead and actually merge this up just a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and delete lower. Now we need to get the thumb in its right spot too. So let's go ahead and grab the picker. And then I'm here, turn on Dynamesh. Perfect. And now we need to get the thumb right where it's at. Let's get that nail in place. I'm actually gonna go ahead and use the Prem Dynamic 
start that position and then we'll we'll do just like what we did with the first one grab this fingernail here there's not attached to anything like what am i doing let's not even do that let's delete this get that first nail the way we like it I'm going to send this. I'm actually going to go ahead and send this home here for a second. Make an IMM brush out of this. This here, I'm going to go ahead and mirror and weld it. So when you get something like this where you mirror and weld, I'm actually going to go ahead and unmask this and drag this over the center line. And mirror and weld again because that will fix that line right away. It is familiar, vampire, but it's not what you think. <laughs> Maybe not yet. I might repurpose for what you're thinking. But if you, um, we actually, this project started from the Santa Cruz hand which is uh, a really cool thing. But yeah, we're, we're getting there. We're getting there. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, the Santa Cruz screwing hand, yeah. I wasn't sure if you were thinking uh, Naruto or anything. <laughs> okay. So now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and let's create an insert mesh, say new. So that I wanna be able to do that each and every time. Okay, and I'm actually gonna go ahead and for now, let's go ahead and save this. Let's do this. Let's reset all of our brushes. I'm gonna reset all brushes. I'm gonna go ahead and copy this and I'm going to come over here I'm Gonna delete all in that and then I'm gonna paste and then I'm gonna delete this right here. Okay, and I'm actually going to um, We'll call this uh, nail zero one. I'm gonna repeat this and I'm gonna go with a longer nail. Maybe a, maybe a little bit wider for like a thumbnail. <laughs> you have vampires and handrails. Perfect. I love it. Love it. Love it. Well, then you are spot on, sir. You are spot on. Okay. Now that I have this, I'm going to go ahead and actually come here and say, create insert multi mesh. So now I have my, my main thumb, my name nail, my main nail, and then a thumbnail that I could use. And then we're going to go ahead and save this out. We'll save this as just uh, fingernails. I'll put this on the desktop for now. Fingernails. And then that way I have that. Now from here, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go ahead and delete this nail now that I have a brush for that. And then that's the OG finger, which is perfect. So now I can come in here and I could just start placing my nails exactly where I want them to be. And if that's not right where I want it all to be, let's go a little bit larger. And embed that. Okay. Very cool for now. Very cool for now. I'm going to go ahead and actually split unmasked points. So I'm going to go here to subtool, split, unmasked points. I'm going to put this above and call this call these nails. Now I'm gonna just hit D for dynamic. Say, yep, that's what I want. Now I can go ahead and place these exactly where I want. Position them. It might be a little bit too big. Scale them down. Makes life a lot easier. We can adjust however we need to after the fact. I'll 
push this in. There we go. Okay. Now same for the thumbnail. So let's switch over to the thumbnail. Go. And now we can adjust our finger around this thumbnail. Come here with our clay buildup. Let's grab this guy. Let's start start blocking this out. I have to watch this from the start since I just got here. Amazing stuff. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, I started this project last week. I stream every Wednesday, so I did the initial block out there. But um, more than welcome to stop in. Always appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. These are always recorded, so I'm always going live around 10 a.m. on Wednesdays. Today I just stepped, I started a little bit earlier because I have an appointment I have to get to. So I have to bail a little bit earlier, but I wanted to stream the full two hours. We started just a smidget, smidget early. Now this song is way too slow. I don't know if you guys can hear my music. I try not to blare everybody with it, but. Okay, we need to make this a little bit higher resolution. Okay. Uh oh, look at this. Okay, we got finger, we got finger wreckage. If you ever get shattering, um, or for some reason it breaks a lot, if you ever get what that kind of showed up real quick, I did control Z and kind of clean and just kind of smooth for a second. But if that happens to you, and you get that kind of cheese grater effect. Uh, what you're going to want to do is actually go under geometry, go to mesh integrity, and do a check mesh integrity, and it'll run a test. And if you have any inverted normals or colliding normals or anything is weird, it'll let you know. Then you could just hit fix mesh and then run it again, and that will pretty much clean that up for you. a lot of times when that will happen you'll actually be what you'll be experiencing is that the resolution and the mesh in its current state it's not quite optimized to um to kind of weld itself together correctly so it kind of just pops all over the place um so that's a great way to fix anything that might be a little little much okay This is the thumb. I'm going to come back in here. I'm going to do this and call this thumb. Okay. And now let's actually clean this up just a little bit. And then we can position it officially. Still pretty low. So let's up the resolution. Down. Out here, that knuckle. There we go. There we go. There we go. And just a reminder, too, if anybody's coming in and doesn't know, yesterday we released at Maxon a patch for ZBrush 2022.0.6. And everybody who has a license for ZBrush, whether it be Pixelogic license or Maxon license, you can go ahead and upgrade to the 2022.0.6, which fixes a lot of bugs and things that everybody had been calling out and asking for. So we had a lot of bug fixes we wanted to cover, and everybody can get that today. So definitely pop on over and upgrade your ZBrush to the 2022.0.6. What is the best way to start a character from Dynamesh Sculptress? Oh wait, I'm sorry. What is the best way to start a character? Dynamesh Sculptress Pro, a base model. It really depends on what you're going for. If you want to start a character from complete scratch, which I've done a bunch of times, um, I like to do the block out method. Um, it's definitely probably the simplest way with primitives and stuff, but I use Dynamesh personally. Um, again, there's no real wrong way to eat a Rhesus, as they say. Um, the thing to remember is that it's the workflow that you're comfortable with that will get you a good chunk of the way there. So 
Um, for building out or blocking out a character, I would just use like primitive shapes and, and some Dynamesh. Um, but I've also blocked out characters really quickly um, just from a sphere. So it's, it's really up to you. I can show you both methods. Let me save this real quick. Okay, this will be... Yeah, let's just keep it on the three. It's fine. Do I stream on my own personal Twitch account? I used to stream a lot. Um, I don't, haven't streamed as much anymore, but I want to get back into it. I want to find a time in which I can set aside that's consistent. I don't want to just stream randomly. Um, but I definitely want to find a time that's better uh, to come on. I've been debating it and looking at my schedule. Everything's just gotten kind of crazy at work, so it's been a little hard to do that. But I'm happy I get to stream for work, so that kind of helps. But... Um, shared it earlier today but let me pop it back on um uh, yeah i want to start streaming again on my personal i'm gonna share i'll share my instagram because uh, that actually has my link tree on there as well so you guys can check out my personal stuff there Okay, yeah, we're definitely going to need to weld the the thumb and stuff like that together. So now let's get let's get the let's get the pose and let's get some color because right now like the color it's just like kind of flat matte, kind of like me, kind of like me. So let's get something a little bit nicer in there. So let's actually pull up. Where's my reference? Did I use what did I use last time? Did I use pure ref? Santa Cruz screaming hand. No, I don't want to do that. Why would I want to do that? Here's my pure ref. Aha, here it is. Okay, so I'm definitely going to want to get this color, and then we're going to start wanting to do some bandages and stuff like that. So let's let's start getting some color going on in here, and then the official pose. So on this right here, let's actually... Come here. Let's tap right there. Let's hit, our, let's hit our pizza box. Grab the nail so we're posing everything together. Now the pinky and the thumb, this is an important little tip, but the pinky and the thumb, their pads touch. So when you're posing, you want to make sure that at least the, the thumb and pinky have some sort of a very similar alignment pad to pad, especially when the hand is open. The hand's open, they close it, they can, they can rotate to each other. So this, this makes it seem a little bit more believable and a little bit more uh, realistic. I think that's going to be good. I'm trying to think of like, I don't want this to be too, I don't want this to be too wild or too rotated forward. I actually like that pose a lot. Taking a little bit of creative liberties to get the result that I want. All right, that's better. Okay, let's get some color going on here. So I'm going to use the color I'm going to go ahead and tag that onto my pure ref and I'm going to set that color and then I'm going to hit V and then I'm going to go ahead and tag this color, set that as well. I'm going to go ahead and close this down. Now I have the hands. We're going to go up to color, color fill, and we're going to actually going to change this to, I have a startup material that's a little bit more of, a little bit more waxy. I kind of like the way it looks. Get all this going. What's our time look like? Bandages are going to take a little bit. But we can get a cheat block out going pretty quickly. And then we can refine the rest of them. Okay, now we got... 
rotate that. Let's call that there. Now I'm going to take some creative liberties with the color of the teeth. But now, come up here, let's go back to Z plug and Z color. Let's, this is a different color. Set that color will be for the tongue. There we go. What did you miss? Um, a little bit, <laughs> but don't worry. Well, you'll be able to play it back for sure. Nice to close the way. I hope the build, hope the build's coming along. Actually, oh my gosh, I have a story for you. The eclipse is gone. I don't have the eclipse anymore. Um, but what I do have is a 2003 Fair Lady Z. Um, not, not just a generic 350. Um, and it has a VQ uh, 35DE engine in it. It's actually really nice for 200,000 plus miles on it. I just picked it up earlier this year. Um, I want to, I'm torn. I don't know if I want to turn it into a drift car or if I actually want to turn it into just kind of like a nice, um, like kind of restored a bit. It needs a little bit of love. Hello, hello. What's up, Prashan? How you doing? Welcome in, man. So yeah, but the Eclipse itself had a lot of uh, issues. I bought it for like two grand. Didn't work. I got it working. Um, and then long story short, it basically just like, it just like killed it. Like, the, the motor was terrible. It was a 420A motor. It was terrible. Um, the state didn't want to legally smog it. Even though, it, was, it was just a bunch of stuff. <laughs> so don't worry about it. Hello from Brazil. Hello. So yeah, so unfortunately, no, I don't. But you know what? It's okay because I got a much better car for it. When did you learn 3D art? You're interested. That's a great question. Um, so it's actually kind of a bit of a journey, um, which I love sharing. So great question. Um, Basically, I started th my 3D art journey when I was in aerospace for about 12 years in total. Um, I was a CNC uh, lay the mill operator, making nuts, bolts, bearings, and odd parts um, for a long time for aerospace. And what ended up happening was I got burnt out with my job and I just didn't like it anymore. It was not something that I was super in love with. It's just more of the point that I, I didn't have a high school. I had a high school education, but not a college education. And I grew up in the 90s. So growing up in the 90s, we were told all the time, you need a degree, you need a degree, you need a degree. Um, and I couldn't afford to go get one. So I ended up working Mick Jobs and um, I fell into it. Um, and it was good for a while. Like I learned a skill set. I was good at math, so it was fine. But then eventually I started learning how to do CAD work for simple stuff like nuts, bolts, profiles, bearings, um, odd plates here and there. And then eventually I started doing just traditional basic box modeling. Nothing advanced, really crazy or anything. Um, then what ended up going on from there was I got out of aerospace and I ultimately ended up starting to search for something creative. Now, the part of the story that I guess it starts back when I was in middle school, I used to draw all the time as a kid, but what's funny is I used to draw only what I saw. I never created anything original from scratch. So I wasn't really sure if I could make it as an artist and I put the pen down for years just said nope never gonna make it you need a high, you need a college education can't go to college i didn't want to be in debt so i didn't put myself through college so i just said you know i forget it it's fine i just accepted my fate <laughs> it sounds like it's terrible right now on the surface but then um right around the time i was getting ready to exit machining all together and find something new i started stumbling upon upon creative outlets so i met a photoshop artist and started learning how to kit bash and photoshop scenes and then shortly after that, um, we're going to go ahead and weld these fingers while I talk, by the way. Um, and then slowly after that, um, I ultimately started getting into the, the feeling of like, I needed to do something. Photoshop was cool. So I got Photoshop retouching jobs and I shot wedding photography for a little bit. But then a little program called Sculptress showed up on my doorstep and buddy of mine was like dude like that's really cool you should check this out and then 
that same guy turned around and said, hey, there's this program called ZBrush. And I think it was 4R7 at the time. Anyway, so he showed me ZBrush and I got playing with his copy of ZBrush for a little bit. Really fell in love with it. It took me a little bit of time to get used to the UI. Like you, I'm sure you, everybody here is like, wasn't quite sure, but I was able to do some YouTube tutorials and kind of just figure it out and just played with it. And then I ended up taking a class with David Igo at this company called Studio Arts. Um, and that was able to do that through my work, which was nice because uh, I had transitioned from machining to graphic, graphic designing. And it was just fun to have a creative outlet. So ZBrush became a program in which I was able to really like dive into and um, experience firsthand the ability to create something from scratch. And then David Igo is like, hey, you know, a lot of artists use concept art to make their models. So that skill set that I had developed as a kid were just drawing what I saw verbatim. Like if I drew an anime character, it's because I saw it. If I drew a thing on a wall, like it's just, it was all there. Um, mind you, I didn't like still life. So um, ultimately I just said, you know what? This sounds like, this, this feels really, really fun. I'm having a good time. And if concept to 3D is the workflow, I can do that. So um, I just kind of doubled down and just started really learning ZBrush because the program, I met a lot of artists who were like, oh, you know, that whole 80-20 approach, 80% of your work is done with 20% of the, of the knowledge. But a lot of artists were like, oh, I use like, I use like five brushes and I use this one method and I don't break from it. But I'm a person who needs to kind of understand what it is I'm operating in as best as I can. So ultimately I just started learning as much as I could. And then eventually um, I got to a spot where I couldn't learn anymore on my own. I was struggling. Then I joined the 3D character workshop and I worked with Shane Olson and then he just pushed me to that next level. And then I was able to start networking and connecting with people and it just kept growing from there. So it was this really interesting transition of like discovery and then pure interest and intriguing that really pushed beyond. And what I really like too is that everybody in the ZBrush community or just in the artist community in general was all about like art is really cool. Art can be whatever you want it to be. So I didn't feel this need to try to quickly find my style. I just wanted to create and have fun. Um, and ZBrush allowed that. So that's where I got. And then eventually I started uh, freelancing and then I worked for uh, a few different companies. Uh, Coach.com was one of my favorite companies I worked for as a freelancer. And then eventually I got picked up by Funko and I worked for Funko for a little under a year before um, the opportunity to teach ZBrush came up. Now, I had already been joining, I'd already been using the ZBrush Live platform. They accepted me on their team back in 20, late 2020, early 2021, I think. I hadn't been streaming here for too, too long, but it was nice because um, they liked what I did. They brought me on and then I was able to stream here and share the knowledge I had, which helped push me as a, an, an instructor and a, and a teacher of art. And then this was really cool because then I fell in love with teaching. <laughs> so it's like, it's like twofold. It's like, I love teaching and I love doing the art. So it was all these things rolled up into one nice package. Um, and I felt like it was just a really good opportunity. So that's my story kind of jumbled. Hopefully that made sense. But yeah, I, I love it. Honestly, like, like, a um, a hobby of mine is working on cars. I like working on cars on the side and it has the same vibe for me where like I get to kind of, I, I get to just hone in on my work and shut my brain off and let the creative side flow. And that's why I'm not somebody who like tries to rush to get it done. I try to just, I try to just do a thing and see how it works. And I'm not worried about if I fail um, because I don't look at failure as failure. I look at failure as learning. So if I do something wrong, I just discovered how not to do something. And I want to turn that around and start saying, okay, well, if I if that didn't work, then how does it work? And I just start discovering it that way. And I find that that mindset was really helpful in the early stages of my growth as an artist, you know? 
don't look at failures like up oh, i did it wrong i'm terrible no look at it like okay i did it this way it doesn't look good so don't do this but how can i do it and you start searching and you start discovering new things so that's how i look at it very vibey all over the place uh do 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 i missed a lot of stuff sorry hold on one second let me catch back up um what would be the best way to smooth out the lumpy the bumpy mesh that is still bumpy even after using smooth brush and subdividing um so actually the best way to do it five four two is i'm going to be doing this really soon is that um if you want to keep all the lumpiness out of your sculpts a lot of it's going to come down to z remesher and then working within subdivisions and then you'll step down from higher subdivisions to lower subdivisions to smooth that surface back out. Um, in fact, I can show you that real quickly here. We'll just insert a sphere real fast. So for example, here, if I go ahead and I'm gonna, I'm actually going to Z remesh this pretty far for you. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and say, let's Z remesh this low. We have something ridiculous. Now I'm gonna subdivide a few times, okay? Now I'm going to go ahead and use clay buildup. I'm going to do this, right? Now what's really cool is when I'm trying to smooth this down, it still has that bumpy feel. If I go ahead and step down by just lowering my subdivision or hitting uh, shift, um, not shift S, shift D, and then I go ahead and smooth this down a little bit. This is pretty aggressive. And then I step back up and I smooth. And I step back up. You can see here that each time I step back up, I'm having to smooth less and less and less. And now I can have a smoother surface where before it was lumpy. So for this hand in particular, once I get the shapes that I like, I'm not worried about the lumpiness right now. I'm just worried about like the feel of the hand and how the silhouette looks, which is starting to look really good. I like what I have going on. So once I get ready, I'm going to Z remesh this. Um, after I do a semi clean up and then I'll project history and then I'll step through those subdivisions to smooth all that texture and detail down. So then I'll be in nice and clean. Um, and if you work pretty low with your subdivisions, meaning your mesh, your base mesh is pretty low, it'll help you keep things smoother, especially if you're going for stylization. Do I watch the Thundermans? I don't know. Oh, you're a, you're a, you're, oh, cool. Nice, Prashan. That's awesome, dude. Is it compatible on HP Elite Book? Uh, ZBrush? Yes. ZBrush is compatible on most PC computers and tablets. Um, yeah, ZBrush can run on some pretty older software, uh, or older hardware. Um, yeah, it's optimized that way for that. Please show how to merge uh, two objects. Absolutely. Um, I actually did it with these fingers. I, I did it the first way earlier, which this will be recorded. So um, especially Prince, if you're on uh, YouTube, you'll be able to uh, dial back at the end of the stream. But you could do it the way I did with these fingers where I have everything in a folder. I click on this gizmo. I'm not gizmo, the um, cog wheel and go to merge folder and that will merge everything together, which is how I got these fingers together. Um, a simple way to merge something together um, so let's just say like this, this ball and this cone, Oop. right? And I'm just going to go ahead and come over here, turn everything else off with these two things. So the easiest way to merge these things together is to bring this here. Now there's two ways you can go about it. So you can stack it, make sure it's overlapping, and then just come here and merge down. And now you have this. Now the old way of merging things together so that it's welded completely watertight would be just to go to uh, geometry dynamesh and then just dynamesh that. And that's gonna bring that together, making that watertight. However, the other way to merge things together would be to turn on the gizmo by hitting W on the keyboard and hitting this cog wheel when it's truly, like when there's no um, symmetry, you can't have symmetry turned on for this. Center this to the true center of the object. Hit that cogwheel again, and then you're gonna to wanna to go to remesh by union. And this is actually going to merge those two things together here. Now, a trick that I do is once I have the remesh union turned on, I actually go ahead and 
turn on symmetry, smooth brush at a very low intensity, and then I turn on sculptress. And what I do is I just kind of come through here and use sculptress to kind of just help make sure that these things are really nice and welded together. I'll turn off sculptress, I'll turn off symmetry, or you could leave symmetry turned on at this point, and then I'll go ahead and I will Z remesh the rest of the way. So I'll go to Z remesher, and then if I wanna keep the groups, I could say keep groups, um, and then maybe turn smoothing off, and then I'll Z remesh that together, give it a second, and then it will merge itself together. And that's how you can merge two objects together pretty similarly. Now, depending on your mesh, of course, you might get a little bit of funkiness, so you'll want to kind of work on that a little bit, or maybe the topology was too high, so we'll zero mesh maybe a little bit slightly higher, just so that we have some nice cleanly result. Then you can smooth that down, and then you got these two objects merged together. So there are two ways to do that. If you do the Z remesh, or um, the remesh by union method, which I just did right now, a trick for that is to keep the the mesh or the quad size as close together as possible. So if we back this up for a second, oop, if I were to actually want to make sure like I would maybe divide this up a little bit, then have something a little bit more like this, then come through here, turn off symmetry, come on down and then remesh by union. And that's gonna give you a much tighter, cleaner, uh, uh, cleaner result. We can even go ahead and do deformation, which is over here. Deformation and polish groups. Kind of clean that up just a little bit. And then from there, you can go ahead and zero mesh to give you a different result. Let's see, do, do, I, do I play uh, FNAF Mario Madness? I have not, no. Awesome, Andrew, awesome. I wanna make sure what are you pressing to unhide the mesh? Oh, um, when I hide the mesh, I press Control Shift. And then if I want to unhide that mesh, I swipe it if I want to switch. If I want to just have it completely um, uh, show back up both sides, I then Control Shift and then tap. If you're on Mac, it's Command. Oh, thanks, Chris. I appreciate that, man. Let's see. Um, have I seen Spicer lately? I, I, I he has not reached out. Uh, used to watch his streams. Miss watching his craziness on here. Um, I'll have to, I'll have to tell him. I'll have to tell him that you miss him. But uh, I haven't seen him lately. Um, you know, that's the thing with ZBrush Live artists. What's cool about being on ZBrush Live is that if at any point in time an artist, for whatever reason, needs to just take a break, they let us know, and um, then they let us know when they want to pop by, pack on. And it's so amazing, damn! I can't wait to make something like. Oh, thanks, man. Let's see. Do you think that ZBrush, uh, I think it's going to take over? No, I don't, I don't think so. I know a lot of people started using Blender. Said, you know, look, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you real opinion as an artist, you know, not just, not just as somebody who's employed with, uh, with ZBrush. The thing is, is that ZBrush is an amazing program for sculpting. It's a dedicated sculpting program. Um, you know, and the, it's an industry standard program. Everybody uses it. You know, learning how to do something in other programs, go ahead, I warrant that, you know. I really want to make sure, you know, because it's a skill you're learning. The program is just the tool in which you're utilizing, you know, f to show off or establish those skills in the first place, you know. So there, there are a lot of programs out there that are really good for, you know, uh, starting up, especially if everybody's working within a budget. ZBrush is great, especially if you're somebody who's trying to get on a professional level. ZBrush is the program. So, you know, opinions, opinions are flying, sure, you know, but at the end of the day, like, I believe in the program, I believe in what's happening, and I believe that, you know, over time, it's just going to get better and better, and, you know, it's, it's always going to put its best foot forward. So, you know, whatever side of the fence you are on, it, don't worry about it. Just be an artist, use the tool. I love ZBrush. I've always loved ZBrush and I can't wait to continue the path with it. So, you know, honestly, like that's, that's just kind of my vibe on it. So see, I want to make sure I caught everything. I don't want to get distracted. I only have a few more minutes. Sorry. Uh, blah, blah, blah. blah. 
Can I make an anime character? Yes, actually, I um, that is that is part of what I specialize in. I do make anime characters. Um, I kind of I'm kind of just a okay. It's gonna sound weird, I guess. I'm a sculptor who sculpts things I love, and I love anime. Um, so if you were to go onto my Instagram page for a, for a minute, um, I I do sculpt anime. Um, I actually have a Nanashimura piece right here that I'm working on. Um, I did it, my own iteration on uh, Street Fighter. Um, I did it, this Demon Slayer piece that a lot of people love. I did my own iteration. In fact, you know what? Why am I even showing this? Check this out. Check this out. It's actually sitting right over here. I think I can go full screen here. Let me see. Can I go full screen? Yes, I can go full screen. Check this out. This was my version of, this is a pretty big piece, a little dusty. But this is uh, the fight scene from Street Fighter II, the animated movie, the 1990 version. Um, this is Chung Li pushing Vega through the wall. I had never seen a sculpt of this actually happening. And so I decided to sculpt it myself. Um, that was one thing that I thought was really cool. Probably my favorite part of that whole movie is when she just kicks him through that damn wall. <laughs> so, so that is my favorite part. Um, and then, yeah. Uh, I've sculpted uh, some other anime stuff as well. I've sculpted a Vegeta. I have some other stuff. In fact, here, hold on one second. I sculpted this for my best friend, and my girlfriend and I had painted this together. Thing is just awesome. Now that Chung Li is uh, is free to download uh if you guys want to download it on uh, my link my linkedin on instagram i have that there but this this piece i loved it super super cool yeah chung lee got pretty damaged but that fight was amazing yeah one of my favorite favorite parts i remember the first time i saw that and i was like oh my god she's just like getting beat like i was a kid and i knew i just knew it was bad and then to see her pick up that couch and then to like to just kick him through that wall. I, I remember just like, <laughs> I was just like floored. I was like, oh my God, this is crazy. This is crazy. Yeah, Spicer will be back for sure. Um, let's see. Uh, people like me choose the most difficult things to start out with. Oh, dude, Dakota, I'm the same way. I am the same way. Don't worry, man. I, I, I start the same way too. Got it. Thank you. Let's see. Uh, when you retop with something, let's say a chess piece and you want the bottom part of that flat is there a way to make that perfectly flat there absolutely is yes there is a way to make that perfectly flat so um how can i the best piece i can do to show this i know okay i got it um so let's go with i'm gonna load up please please Oh, okay, that's a project. Okay, you know what? Um, doo -doo 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 -doo, ZBrush will work. I'm trying to think of a good piece to show that on my sculpts. Um, okay, you know what? Actually, I just want it here. Let me load up this walkie-talkie piece that I, I had done for a little bit. This is a good example. Here's this walkie-talkie piece. Okay. So here is a section of this walkie-talkie, um, and let's just say, sake of arguments here, do 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 do. I'm gonna go ahead. Is this what is this? Not have subdivisions. Okay, so I'm gonna hit Z Modeler and come over here, Q Mesh. Okay, so check this out. So I'm gonna have this here, and let's say I have this pointed up a little bit. This is pointed down. This is this is up like this. Okay. So the thing, like, let's say I want to make this perfectly flat. I'm even going to add in an insert loop right here. Okay. Just to kind of demonstrate. So if I want this to be perfectly flat, like this piece right here would be my base. What you're going to want to do is press and hold command or control and shift together. So control shift if you're on PC, command shift if you're on Mac. And you're going to actually come on up to clip curve right here. And now when you drag out clip curve, notice you have a shadow on one side and not on the other. 
So the shadow side is where you're going to want to uh, have it so that it goes flat. So on the shadow side, that's that's the side in which it's going to change. So you just start dragging that out. Make sure the shadow's right where you want it. Let go. And now this is actually perfectly flat right here. And you can see by the edge loop that that was perfectly flat, where even though the supporting edge loop had followed the original contour. So that's how you would want to do that. So again, it's just go up to clip curve by holding control and shift clip curve, drag that out right about there. And then that will make that perfectly flat. And it's not destroying or cutting or creating any uh, weird artifacts. It's just taking the existing mesh and it's flattening up. So in your case with your uh, chest piece, um, just go ahead and take clip curve and point out. And maybe too, if it's too close, like let's say this was too close, you know, go ahead and do yourself a favor, mask the edge loop you want to flatten, come on up, stretch it up, then clip curve it exactly where you want it to be. And it's just going to take that edge loop and that geometry and shove that down. Boko no Hero. I love the Demon Slayer anime. I'm new to the program and would love to learn how to make anime. Awesome. Awesome. Well, especially with ZBrush. Um, we actually do have, if you go to Projects in the Spotlight, you have an anime head that you could start with. And then, um, I don't sculpt anime as often. I kind of switch back and forth. But another artist would be uh, Sakaki, who streams on ZBrush, as well as Daisuke. Um, he also streams on ZBrush. So, um, those two artists are probably some of the, the uh, more often best streamers for that stuff. Um, let me go ahead and here's the other thing too. Let's go the brush calendar. So we have a calendar that basically lets you know when everybody goes live. But anytime I'm sculpting anime, in fact, if you go through too, if you go to my YouTube or got to go to my YouTube, if you go to YouTube, um, you'll actually, uh, do 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 Yeah. Perfect. Load more. Okay, so when are they streaming? Let me see when they're streaming. But you can come here to this calendar and you actually see when they're streaming. So if we go to calendar, I believe Daisuke streams on Thursdays. Not set up for that. Well, okay, I'll have to get you a time for that. But if you want to see what artists are coming up, here's a calendar for that. And then on top of that, you go to, if you want to see a good chunk of my process, if you go to YouTube and you just type in ZBrush IR Sculpts, maybe Ian. Am I not that popular these days? There we go. Um, there we go, there we go, there we go. Um, you can actually see here, I was actually working on that that project before I believe it was this one here yeah I think I'm doing the Vega here or I'm doing the Ken block out here so this might be a good one for you to look at but so that's mine there's some other ones I did some Demon Slayer stuff you can go down the rabbit hole with that but also too if we go to ZBrush Daisuke Daisuke there you go. This will this will be a really good one for you as well. Because again, he goes through uh, traditional anime sculpting. You'll want to check out his streams as well. He does a lot of that. Um, and then I believe Zebra Sock. Sakaki. Now this is Japanese uh, only stream, but you can still get so much information out from his streams just by watching. Well, he'll go through. In fact, actually, uh, Sakaki um, used to have a book. I don't know if you could find it anymore, but um, he'll go through and he'll show you all the processes for figure. Sakaki works for um, the Good Smile Company. I, think, I want to say good smile. Don't quote me on that one. But he works for one of the top Japanese uh, anime figuring companies. So, or he, or he owns it. 
one of the two. Don't quote me on that. That's bad knowledge. Forget. <laughs> but he's also really, really good. So did I share this one? I did. So check those streams out. Those will be really, really helpful for you, especially if you're doing anime. Because I still watch those streams. All right, we only have a couple more minutes before I have to bounce. So let's clean this hand up a little bit. Hopefully I caught everybody's question. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, it was a gross one, wasn't it? Sorry if I blinded you, Jojo. <laughs> Jojo <-ba. laughs> I, I get to, uh, can you tell some exercise for beginner artists who are learning sculpting, like to improve fundamentals of sculpting and overall sculpting? Uh, Darpan, yes, absolutely. Um, very first thing is do like, like one hour sculpt. In fact, you know what? Here, check this out. Okay. okay. I'm going to clean this hand up here because I like this question and I like what this question is going to do. So the first thing that I really think is a great exercise for beginners um, is making a skull or a human head shape. Do not worry about what um, how it looks. Do not worry about that at all. Um, what I want you to do is actually take... Um, Take a human skull reference um and more importantly actually you don't even have to you you don't even have to google this i'm not even going to show you how to google that just come up here to preferences go up to cam view and say next okay until you come across the skull cam view right here and then crank that size up to 250 okay and then what you're going to do is grab a let me just save this real fast. I don't know if I did or not. I'll work on this a little bit more off stream because I only got a few more minutes. But what you'll do is you'll come up here. You'll insert yourself a new sphere. Make polymesh 3D if it's not already. And then what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and just start kind of blocking out shapes quickly. So you can turn it to the side. Come on up over here. Kind of get the cranium shape going. Okay. And then just... Just try your best to come in here and start making this head shape. And what's really cool about this is that you'll be able to quickly identify um, and you're just kind of timing yourself. You're just going to be able to quickly identify shapes and forms quickly. Um, go ahead and dynamesh it and maybe at like 56 or something like that so you can smooth a little simpler. Something like this. But come in here and just start with a clay buildup brush, so BCB. Come in here and start playing around and trying to match your reference here. And what this will do for you is that this will actually... Uh, I need to turn my smooth up a little bit, that's why. What this will do is this will actually allow you to kind of um, get used to that skill set of seeing what you're working on and then replicating that because again working from concept is important and we're not really super worried about being perfect we're just here making a thing as best as we can and so we're going to go ahead and kind of replicate some of these forms here now i'm not working with perspective at this moment in time but i'm just kind of like taking bits and pieces and saying okay this part right here and you're just going to do this for like do this for like 10 minutes, 10 minutes a day, 20 minutes, 30 if you can, but just come in here and start trying to find your shapes and your forms. Use the move brush, which is a B and V. Use the damn standard B D S to kind of get some basic shapes. And maybe too, like, don't start with the full head. Maybe come in here and say, like, okay, this part's the lower jaw here. So I'm going to go ahead and actually come through, mask this section by hitting Control w to make this a different mesh. And then I'll go ahead and actually delete hidden and then re-dynamesh that. And now I'll just focus on the top part of the skull. But what this will do, like I said, this will help you start to recognize forms and shapes and it'll get you just making something pretty quickly. But again, do not worry about being super perfect or trying to get it done, you know, with with the best thing ever. Just get in here and sculpt this. Change your resolution just a little bit. Great about that. Smooth this part down. And this is all we're going to do. We're just going to sit here and start working on these forms a bit. 
come in here. Let's go ahead and carve a hole in his face. And doing these warm-up exercises, like be uh, doing these warm-up exercises will help your brain and your um, your uh, hand-eye coordination. All that's going to connect well with itself. So you can come in here and start getting these shapes built in. And if you just focus on what you're looking and just get this built in, you can start seeing already within just a few minutes, I have something that is passable. And then notice anytime you see a shadow, if you see a shadow, that's going to represent depth. And if you see a highlight, that's going to represent height. So when you're working on like translating, anytime you see a dark shadow, that's super deep. You're like, okay, that's going to be, that's going to be cut in. And the highlight is going to be the, the part that's actually, you know, uh, hitting the light first. That's going to be the, the higher part. So God, I hope that made sense. Uh, <laughs> so we're just going to come through and you're just going to quickly map something out that looks pretty decent. And again, you're just going to do this quickly for a few minutes. And then you're going to do this every single day for like a week. And then you're going to switch. So you're going to make a skull for like a week. And then after that, you're going to go ahead and make like a cup, like a drinking cup, like a mug or um, a coffee cup. That's a giant coffee I have. Um, or make a cell phone shape. Make Start with simple shapes and things that you can wrap your head around that make sense. And then after a while, you're just going to start recognizing these. So when you go to make a full character, then you'll be able to identify stuff quickly. You'll know where you'll need to improve. And you'll also um, always just be building towards getting that muscle memory going. So in just a few minutes, we built something that at least re resembles a skull. It's nowhere near perfect. This is still going to need a lot of work and cleanup. But hopefully you get the idea of what to do. Do, 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 do. You have the grid uh, project in the light box uh, that have skull pictures from every view. Yes. Um, do, do, do. The other thing, too, is you also have anatomy reference here. If you go to the light box, you go to tool, and you have this Ryan Kingsley model. You double click this. This is a tool. This will actually, this is a great resource. I turn solo back on. It is the, it's a female ecroche, but what's really neat is you open up the sub tool, it has all the names. And all the muscle names are the same, male to female. Um, there's only slight differences in the male body to the female body. A female body usually has wider hips, has uh, breast tissue and fatty tissues in other areas, um, where men are a little bit more uh, straight. So there are some physical differences, but as far as like placement with anatomy, it's all relatively the same. But this is a great way to come through and start naming and isolating stuff. Yeah, absolutely. What's the difference between append and inserting and merging? Okay, so append, when you append and you go ahead and say, I'm going to append a cube, it's going to take a cube and it's going to, or it's going to take your selected sub tool, sorry. It's going to take your selected sub tool and drop it to the bottom of the list, but it will not select it. So append just brings in a new sub tool, but you're not selecting it and it's at the very bottom of the list. Um, for insert, if I go to insert, insert is just going to take like, let's say this, this ring 3D here. It's going to insert it below the subtool you were selected. And it's going to select that subtool for you immediately. So insert means basically insert it right now. Let me work on it right the second. Append is bring it in. I'm going to work on it in a little bit, but I don't care about it. So just drop it to the bottom of the list. That's kind of how I think about it. Now merging just does that. It's just going to merge those tools together. So if I go merge down, that's going to merge from the top or the subtool above the, the one below. It's going to merge down into that. And then from there, you'll have two subtools in one. And then you could, and then to merge that, right? To merge these two subtools, which I covered a little bit um, already in this stream, but I don't mind doing it again here. I'm going to go ahead and just make sure they're intersecting. And then you can either merge via Dynamesh which is just going to geometry and Dynamesh, and that will weld those two things together. Or you can merge um, and weld, or you can weld together by using the remesh by union. So those are a few ways to do that. 
Um, let's see. Do, 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 do. You're a product designer wanting to learn sculpting and found ZBrush perfect for it. Yeah, ZBrush is perfect for it. Nice. Um, but to, to also, uh, so I covered that a little bit in the beginning of the stream too, and the stream will go up, um, will go up after I air off. I'm actually going to be leaving here in a couple minutes, so let me take one or two more questions. Um, yeah, absolutely, Maxi. Beautiful. Um, is, is the ZBrush free? So there's a free version of ZBrush called ZBrush Core Mini. ZBrush Core Mini gives you the sculpting experience for free and gives you an idea of what it is. And then there's ZBrush Core and then there's ZBrush and there's ZBrush. ZBrush Core and ZBrush have a perpetual license and also it has um, a subscription that you could download. So if you would like to check it out, there's also a trial period. I believe the trial is 14 days. So if you would like to try it, um, let me take you to their, their buy now so you could check a look at it. Also too, if you're a student, and that's the one I'm gonna, sh I'm gonna share that too. If you're a student, um, then like at a, at a college in the edu you can actually get entire max on one for twenty dollars a year and no i'm not joking that's full twenty dollars a year for students and teachers and i'm going to share that right now um it's just ten dollars every six months so if you're learning if you're in college or you're learning uh zbrush through a or you're you're in an EDU, this would be perfect for you because then you can get not only um, ZBrush, but then you get Redshift and Cinema 4D, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but there is a 14 day trial. If you want to try it and see if it works for you, follow one of these streams. Um, we also have uh, tons of stuff like Z Classroom, which is perfect for learning, especially in the beginning. Now Z Classroom, uh, these videos here are a couple versions behind because we're currently updating the Z Classroom, but all the information is very relevant and that will get you what you want. Don Graphics, awesome, thank you. Yeah, Daisuke is so awesome. Uh, do, 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 do. Yeah, the roster is more artists from the side of the planet who make max anime characters kawaii models etc etc absolutely I, don't, I love doing it yeah um i have a few more anime projects i want to be doing soon so if you like the way i sculpt and the way i approach things that's definitely a way to do it i will pick those models back up after this guy so okay that's going to cover it for today um where is it grand solo off okay let me make sure this is the right model yep perfect delete this Great, wonderful. So this is where we got today. So next stream, we're going to cover wraps and stuff like that. And then we'll get this project lined up. I'm going to do some cleanup off stream. And just so that's tidy up. So we're not doing the same thing over and over again. But then we'll start getting to wraps. And then we'll get to some gross worm stuff and texturing. Um, this is going to be a fun little project. But something that I like to do here. So this is... Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this. I really loved hanging out with you guys. So I appreciate it. Um, again, I stream here every Wednesday from 10 a.m. to noon. Um, with the exception of today, because it was just a little bit of an early stream. But again, if you would like to check out any of my work, um, and also, too, if you would like to check out um, the last uh, ZBrush stream that we did, check it out there. But my Instagram is here, and I have a link tree in there as well. So thank you guys so much for hanging out, and I will catch you all next week. Bye for now. See you guys.